Hey everyone, welcome back to FTC Team 18172 Uplift Robotics in our tutorial series. And today we're going to be talking about autonomous base basics for FTC Robotics, which is first tech challenge. So what is auto in FTC? Well, it's the first 30 seconds of the whole robot challenge portion. And in that portion, the robot's controlled only by internal code and not by any controllers or outside help. And this section is extremely valuable in terms of points because most of the challenges in this section are very high earning and can really help you later on throughout the robot gameplay. So what are the major aspects of an auto program? Well, there's three main aspects. There's the declaration and init initialization of all hardware components. There's some sort of looping mechanism that continues throughout the full autonomous program. And then there's specific methods that control the robot's motions, like going forward, going backwards, and moving around. So now let's move on to Android Studio so we can show you how the code works. Okay, so this is your basic autonomous program right here. You have the, um, the import statements here, you have the class, and then you have this run op mode, which is the main method in your code. And then you have this wait for start, which waits for the program to start. And before it, you would initialize all your variables and uh, declare it as well. And then in here is where the meat of your code is, just like the loop statement in the teleop. So we have added in all the variables. We've declared it and initialized it into the hardware map. And if you are confused about what we just did here, please go check out our last video on basic teleop and we explain all of this. Um, but we are gonna, uh, move on to methods okay so here are some of the methods that we've created um this first one here is to move the robot forward so basically in this method you created two variables a power variable and a time variable the power variable is set to all motors to for the speed of the motor and the time is for how long you want the motors to be moving for. So um, if you want to use this method and the op mode is active, you would say move forward. And then you would say, I want the robot to move at half speed. For the time is in milliseconds, so this would be one second. So after you finish writing this, after every single movement that you want to do, you need to stop the motors in order for it to move on to the next task. So we created a method called stop motor right here, which sets all the powers of each motor to zero. So just after the move forward, you can say stop motor, and then you can do another task. You can do another move forward with 0.3 speed for 3000 seconds. So now that you have the move forward method, which you can also use for moving backwards if you set the power to negative, like negative 0.5 or negative 0.3. But now we want to turn. So we have two different methods for that. We have turn right and turn left. And the only difference between these is in the turn right method, the left motors are going at the normal power that you input and the right motors are going at a negative power that you set. And the reason this happens is because you have the right side going backwards, the left side going forward, and you're turning right. And this will change depending on your actual hardware setup, which one is negative depending on like the different orientation of the motors. And then for turning left, it's just the opposite. The negative sign is on the left and the normal power is on the right. And similar to the forward, move forward method, you also need stop motor after. So let's try it out. So let's turn right at a power of 0.7 for two seconds. And then obviously we need the stop motor 
method, which will stop it after it turns. So you can't use any degrees or radians or anything like that when you're using time. So it's a lot of trial and error in the beginning to see how long it actually takes to spin a full circle or a quarter circle. So you're just gonna have to try it out, change the numbers around and you'll get it. So we can turn right, turn left, move forward and move backwards, which is all the basic setup that you need for autonomous. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, just so you know, this is the very basic part of autonomous. There's many other components that we can add to make your autonomous way more consistent. And we will go uh, deeper into that in uh, more videos. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments down below and we'll try to answer them uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, thank you for watching.